Well, hello, quilty friends, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today is June 3rd, 2022, and what I'm going to be filming today, or what Cassidy is going to be filming me doing, is my Happy Crochet bags, and they come in a panel. So here's, I did actually did two bags, but here's what one of them looks like. Okay. And so I had two different sides and then I have two different linings on the inside. And then here is the other one where I just did all the vintage ladies on the outside. And then on the inside are the two prints. So on the panel for the yarn bag, you get two outsides or insides and two outsides or insides to make one bag, okay? And you also get an option for the handles. I gave you in this print or in this print. So you can just do whatever color handle that you want. And then this is what, here, let me bring these over here. This is what, um, they look like cut out. So here's one of the handles and then here's the four. And so you can see that I cut them right out on the dashed line. There are directions right on the panel to make this bag without batting, but I want to show you how I make the bag using batting. Using batting makes it just a little bit thicker. So you just do a few different steps. Okay. And then also on the panel, you have enough to make this cute little hooked on crochet bag. Okay. And I designed this to put my notions inside of. And so it can fit right inside the bags as well. And then this is what that looks like. This is for the little tab right here. And I do give you two options on that as well. And so these are just cut out the same way. This is the outside. These two are the lining. And this is the back side. But you could always switch those around if you wanted to. You don't have to do it that way. And then I've cut my batting for both bags. Two pieces of batting for each bag. And I've cut those one inch bigger. And so that means that it's a half inch larger. Let me lay this on here. That means it's basically a half inch larger all the way around. Okay, so just one inch larger. And what I do is I just lay these on my batting and then use my ruler and just cut a half inch past it all the way around. And that ends up being one inch. And then I also, you know, I don't need the instructions, obviously, because I designed them, but here's the instructions that you can cut out. And um, so it gives you all of the instructions. And so you have those. I also have my uh, QR code. For those of you who don't know what a QR code is, you just have to hold your phone over it with your camera on, and then a link will pop up. And you just touch that link and it goes to my link tree, which shows you everything that's going on with my sew alongs and things like that. So that's what that is. I've had a few questions about that. And then you need one zipper for each bag. Okay. I will be using my happy zippers. Okay. And these I'll come, these are 16 inch zippers. And then we just trim off the ends and they come in this many colors in this package. And these have been really fun. And I saved this out because I want to show you this is the batting that I happen to use. I got a package of this um, Happy Cloud batting. And it's by Fat Quarter Shop. And this has two squares, 36 inches. And so I picked that package up because I often use leftover batting. But I use it so much that I my leftover batting bin gets depleted. And so I picked up a bag of this. And I've been able to use that for these bags and it works out great. All right, so what I'm gonna start um, 
with is I'm going to show you, let me just put these back and out of the way a little bit. I'm going to show you how I do the small bag first. And it's basically the same as the large bag. And they have a zip, they both have a zipper on the top. They both have a tab. And I quilted both of them. This one does not have a gusset. And this one does have a gusset. So that's really the only difference. And then size wise. But, you know, they're still sewn the same way. Whether they're a different size or not. So I'm just going to kind of maybe keep that there. So we can see. And the first thing I'm going to do is put my zipper all the way to one end. Okay. And you know what? Maybe I'll show you how to do the tabs first. Get that out of the way so we'll be all ready to go. So I might as well do both of them at the same time. So with the tabs, what you're going to do is you're just going to fold long ways together. And you could do like a quarter inch seam allowance or an eighth inch, whatever you wanted to do. Just sew them together. Back stitch when you start and stop. I have my walking foot on here because that's what I sew the entire bag with. Using a walking foot um, helps to stop shifting when you're using layers, two layers of fabric with batting in between. And so that's why I always use a walking foot. So I'm doing this the same way. using scraps left over from making my bags to put in between. All right, so what I do is I just grab like a safety pin. I don't know, let's, I don't need one that giant. And I will just, you can zigzag these edges if you want to. I'm going to put a safety pin in there right in the seam allowance. This is how my mom always taught me to turn the casings when making skirts and things like that. And it works great for this. And I know there's lots of other tools on the market, but this works just as fine. So I just thread the safety pin inside and just kind of gather it up. This is really short, so it's easy to do. And I just kind of pull that over the edge till it's turning, pull that out, and then I'll do the same thing for the large one. I'll do that later, but I pull them out. And if you want, you could use this to kind of push the seams out, but I kind of just roll them like this. They're nice pushed out and straight and then I'll just give it a quick press and I'm so used to using my clappers for everything because it takes the heat out so quickly that I might as well just lay that on there and let that absorb some of the heat and there you go right there you can top stitch if you want I I don't I just fold it right here in half and run it through again. I don't even need to back stitch. I just want to make sure those are, you know, stay together. And I guess I might as well turn this one now too. This one just takes a few more minutes just because it's longer. But it also might be a little bit easier because it's wider. Now, if you end up making several of these bags, you can always um, just use my other decorator weight prints. I should have brought them out to show you, but I, I do have 12 decorator weight prints, and this is decorator weight thickness fabric, which is kind of a lightweight canvas. You can see that it easily bends and has a nice give to it, but it's very nice to sew on. But it just gives you a little bit heavier weight and I love that, and especially added with the batting, so that 
you know, it just gives it a little bit more body for the bag. So this is one of the decorator weights. You can see, Cass, you want to zoom in on here? I've got some mini ironing boards covered with a few of them there too. But, you know, I, I have a tutorial here on my channel on covering ironing boards where you can see my fabrics. And so you could just, you know, use the same sizing that's on the pattern is what I'm saying and cut another bag, you know, from my pattern, from the decorator weight prints. And that would be just as easy. Okay. So there we go there. I'm going to grab a longer clapper and just put it right there and let that cool for a minute. All right. So let me find a shorter one. And then I'll just set those aside. I don't want to be clipping long threads off everything, and so I kind of like to just feed these in between. And if you've watched my videos before, you know that already. Okay, I'm going to set that up there, out of the way. And, okay, back to the zipper. All right, so I've got my two ends all zipped down to one end, so that just stays out of the way. And for this small bag, because it's only this wide, you don't have to exactly center it, but I just you know, kind of put it in the center of the zipper so that that's not going to, you know, so that nothing's going to be wrong with that. Okay, so what do you want, what you want to do with this is you're going to have your, one of your lining pieces right side up. Your zipper's going to go on top of that. And then you're going to have your front piece right side down. Okay. And let me grab a few clips up here. You can pin or you can clip or you can just kind of guess, but these we're not gonna trim down necessarily, so I want them to meet up right here. So what I'm gonna do is just place a clip there so I make sure that they line up this way, okay? And then that's what I'll do in the beginning as well. And then once we start sewing, we can just remove that clip. But what we want is the top edges of all three to match up, to meet up. And I can just start sewing on the zipper clear back here if I want. This is gonna end up being trimmed off. Okay, I kinda stuck that little, okay, there we go, past that. A little middle thing. Okay, so I'm just going to use my quarter inch line right here on the Bernina and use that as my seam allowance. So I'm just going to start right there and once I start sewing into there, I'm going to keep my needle down too. Then I can remove my clip and then I can just kind of make sure they're all lined up at the top here as I go. And if I'm using my quarter inch line here, then it should be even all the way across and that'll take care of that. I think I can take this clip out now at this point because it's just easier to go ahead and line up as I sew and hold it down with my fingers. Now, if it ends up, I guess I will backstitch right there. It's not really necessary. If they end up a little bit uneven, like this is even, if they end up a little bit uneven, like this one sticks out a little bit more, we can always trim that off at the end after. So don't worry about that. You don't have to unpick or re-sew it if it's not exact that way, okay? And then I'm just gonna go ahead and sew right off of that zipper. So this is what this should look like. This is your front piece. And this is your lining. So see, that's how they're now outside of each other. And this is how it looks on the zipper. All right. Now let's go over here to the ironing. Move that out of the way. Let 
ties nice and flat and that will handle. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna press these. In fact, I'm gonna open them up so I can do it separately. And before I put the iron on it, I really like to use this. I don't really wanna put the iron on my zipper too much. I have put the iron on my zipper and nothing's really happened, but I don't want it, I don't want anything to happen. So I kind of avoid that. But see how I'm just kind of pulling it right to where I stitched it. And this, because it's flat and doesn't have a curve in it, really gets that nice and flat. And then I can just turn it over and do the same thing. And this is gonna kinda help them to be nice and even and meet up where they need to meet up. You know, then I can take the iron here and just, I'm still kind of pulling out on the zipper just to make sure. And when I am going over the zipper, I'm just kind of going really fast. All right, so these kind of are, this is what this is looking like. Now, this is the time when I grab a piece of the batting, and I know it's cut larger, but I just wanna make sure that there's at least one side that's straight. Now, this is how I like to add my batting instead of doing my batting at this point, because then you have double layers of batting because you're folding over, and I like just one nice layer. So what I do is I just Put that right in there, right where it's going to fold over it. And then tuck that under because we are going to top stitch this and then quilt it. Okay, now once we get to that point, we can grab a couple of pins if we want to just make sure it's pinned into place not shifting, maybe one more. And then I'm gonna bring it over here to the machine and just top stitch it. Maybe I won't start where that zipper is right there. Okay, needle up, there we go. And I'm just gonna use the edge of my foot as my guide as how far along I'm gonna go um, in with my top stitching. And, you know, I might put a couple stitches back stitching as I go. And I can feel that this is just one layer and that the batting is all the way up there. And if it shifts or something, I can always, before I get to that point, remove a pin, unfold it, and make that batting go up there. But I think I did a pretty good job on this one, getting that right up in there where it's not folded. It's just a flat. And then all right so that's what that looks like let's remove these pins so that's what that looks like right there okay and so when I quilt on this, I'm gonna go ahead and start, because I know this is nice and tight up here. I am just gonna start, um, I'm probably gonna lift this up. I'm not gonna go over the zipper yet because we wanna be able to still unzip that. I'm gonna start right here and just do an eighth of an inch. Make sure they're all lined up. And I can see that this is lined up right here. And, you know, we just keep it as flat as we can. And if there's a problem with the front and the back not matching at the top or the bottom or something like that, then we can trim it before we sew the two sides together. It's not really that big of a worry. But as I'm doing this, I'm constantly just pulling it down. And I'm just doing an eighth of an inch in so that my quarter inch seam when I sew them together will cover that up. And 
I'm just going to go to the zipper and back stitch. Let's see how we did here. Okay, so this is what I mean by maybe not lining up. See how this back stitching goes in a little bit deeper than this one? But that's okay. We'll worry about that after we quilt them and after we go to sew them together. So what I'm going to do with the quilting with this is just very simple quilting. I'm just going to come down here to about the top of this. This line right here. And I'm going to keep the line of this right there. Use that as my guide so I know that I'm going straight and I'm just going to do straight across here and this is where the walking foot really comes in handy or else your fabrics are going to pucker. See when I get to the end there's no puckering here and then I will just sew down to where I can eyeball it to where I can go down the center here. Let's see I need to shift it over there a little bit. Okay there we go. And I'm just going to go right between and it really helps that my walking foot is open right here so I can see exactly where my needle is going in. And then it's just as easy for me to back stitch right here to get to that line. About right there. Went a little bit too far, so I'm just kind of sewing sideways. <laughs> see how I shift that? Just so that I can start my straight line here. When I machine quilt my small projects like this, I'm not really, really picky on how I do them. I really just kind of find a line on the fabric or some designs or something that I can follow. And, you know, that really is as much quilting as I find necessary on the front piece right there. Okay. And then at this point, you know, we could trim off just the batting. Let's see what we need to do at that point. I do not want to do anything with the zipper yet at all. So I might just go like that and that's gonna leave a little piece of batting. But I'm just wanting to make sure the reason I'm doing this is just to, you know, line my sides and see what needs to happen there. So oh, this one I can go all the way in because I didn't sew. Okay, so I don't know. Let me see why I can't. That's bugging me. And if it's bugging me, that means it's coming off. But I'm not, again, clipping into the zipper or anything. All right, so that's what the front piece looks like. You can bring it over here and press it if you want. But, you know, it's just three lines, simple lines of quilting. That's all that I did on this one as well. Okay, and now the back side, the quilting, I did a little bit closer because I just used the edge here. But... The back side is going to be sewn the exact same way on the other side of the zipper. We're just kind of going to um, ignore this and we're going to put the lining with right sides together again. And then this is the back piece and we want it to show out so that will be right sides down. But we really want this to line up with this side, which is, you know, really why you need to clip it. So it's gonna line up with the top here, but line up with this side. Okay, can you see that? I might just put a clip here first and then add the top piece to it. These clips hold it pretty good. And then again, this is going to line up with the top edge of this zipper, the top edge of the lining. 
And we want it to line up with this side because they're printed on the fabric panel the exact same size. Now I can just move that. Okay, and then just go over here since that's held into place on that and this is a little bit easier. So I'm gonna pull that up on the top edge and that does line up there. Let me try to get my fingers out of the way so you can see. My zipper's zipped up here out of the way. And I'm just gonna clip that. And again, I can that holds it into place, but that's still going to, you know, guide that and keep that out of the way. All right. So I'm gonna start right there on my quarter inch line. And hopefully you'll find this tutorial helpful. I know when I did my last bag panel tutorial, um, so many of you commented and said how helpful that was to watch how I did it. And so thank you so much for those nice comments. And so we'll do the same thing here. And hopefully visually it will help you because I'm a visual person. So I like to, you know, watch what's happening. So again, all three are lined up at the top and using the quarter inch seam. And you know, it doesn't have to be exact matching the other side of the zipper. I'll show you what I mean. Um, you know, it's just a bag. This is not, we don't have to be perfect. We just need to put the back together, bag together and make sure that it zips, right? And we'll be okay and good to go. All right, so now I'm just gonna sew off of that. Let me find a little scrap again. Again, this is not about perfection. It's just learning new skills, having fun sewing bags together. Okay, so now on the other side, it's just going to look the same as the front. So I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna press it. I'm gonna insert my other piece of batting and top stitch it and quilt it. And since you saw me do that on that half, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. And then I'll come back when that's all completed and we'll go from there. Okay, so here I have both sides. So I just quilted here, quilted a little bit closer together, straight lines and just used the edge of my zipper foot. And this is what I meant, not my zipper foot, my uh, walking foot. So this is what I meant by it doesn't really matter if the seam allowance, see how the seam allowance on this is closer to the zipper and this is a little bit farther away, but it's still even because I used the same guide. So it doesn't matter. The zipper's just gonna be at the top and it, you know, so don't let that worry you. So I went ahead and quilted this. This is what it looks like on the back side, And I trimmed off the batting. And then at this point is where I wanna make sure Okay, so when I trimmed this off, these were even. The batting sticks out here just a little bit. And on this one, see how the top stitching goes off a little bit? So what I'm gonna do is I just grab a ruler and determine if that's square. To me, that looks square, but if it's not square, then I'll go ahead and trim it to square. Let me, you know what? I don't know if you can see it on that surface, if I lift it up a little bit. So you can see that that is square going this way, so I'm gonna leave it. And even though the batting's sticking out, it's not, I'm going to be taking a quarter inch seam allowance, and this is also on the inside of the lining, and that's gonna cover up this part right here. I hope that makes sense. So I'm not gonna worry about it. I just wanna make sure at this point that this is all even with this all the way around. And it is, okay, just on the dotted lines. I didn't have to do any trimming. All right, so now there's a few things that we're gonna do to finish up that bag. The first thing is, the very important thing is we're going to now bring the zipper into the center. And if we don't do that, then we're not gonna be able to turn the bag right side out, okay? 
And then before I trim the zipper off, obviously I'm gonna sew from here to here and here to here several times back and forth. And this will easily, this zipper, you can easily sew over this. But I don't wanna to forget to put on this little tab. So what I do with that, might as well do that at the same time I'm sewing this zipper part. I just bring it down to about right there, raw edges even. Okay, and I'm just going to top stitch that on. I might want to back stitch it, but remember when I sew the bag together, that's going to get some more sewing as well. So what I'm going to do is just kind of do a straight line from here to here. See how that kind of sticks out a little bit. I'm just going to ignore that, continue, and see I'm going straight back and forth. And I'm going to do this several times. When I say several, I don't know, five or six, okay? And then, and do not do that until your zipper is in the middle. Big warning. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna do the same thing here. I might as well just start going up the side. So I can get a straight shot here. Going back and forth. Whoop, I did break my needle. That's the first time that ever happened. Okay, let me change my needle real quick. But before I change the needle, I can at least tell you what I'm gonna do because I'm not gonna sew yet for a minute. Okay, so then what I do, I probably went too fast, <laughs> so I broke my needle. Um, what I'm gonna do now at that point is grab an older pair of scissors. I'll grab those two when I change my needle. And I just cut my zipper. Okay, and let me change my needle and I'll be right back. Okay, we'll just pick right up where we left off, which was me changing my needle. So um, maybe a good tip would to be having an extra needle handy or even better, just go slower <laughs> than I did. Okay, so I grabbed a pair of scissors that I can cut through zipper because they're older and I've used them a million times. And so this, this is the point that I just cut right through that. And let me hold that right, and then cut right through that. And then that way, all we have left to do is to fold and match these up. And hopefully I won't break a needle again. But of course we don't need to sew across here. We just need to go across the three sides. But it's probably a good idea just to to clip these layers because, you know, they've got batting in them and it doesn't hurt. Don't use these clips a lot, but once in a while, they're pretty handy. And then I'm just gonna start, knowing that these corners are matching up, I'm just gonna start right here and I'm gonna use, I'm gonna follow this walking foot in right here. This is the quarter inch. And this goes in a little bit more, just so I'm taking a little bit bigger than a quarter inch seam. I just, more importantly to me, I want to have a line that I can really follow so that this is even. So let's do this a little bit slower so I don't uh, break a needle. But I'm um, just gonna start and I'm gonna back stitch several times because that zipper's on top. I wanna make sure, you know, that that's secure. All right, and then when I start into the bag, I'm gonna do the same thing, just right at the top of the bag. Okay, so now I'm following the inside here. Sewing along. I could, if I wanted to, move that clip there. I just wanna make sure that these corners stay. There we go. Now, you can sew all the way off almost and then back up to the seam allowance. Let's see, that was pretty good. And then on the corners, you might wanna just back stitch a little bit too, just to secure that. I know these are even. Thank you. 
and then I'm sewing that um, the little tie within it, you know, doing this. Okay, so now I'm getting to that, and I'm just back stitching quite a bit. Uh, when I get to there, I don't know what that sound was if I broke. I did. Oh, oh my, my word. I've never done this. Of course, I'm on camera. But anyway, so I will change my needle again. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is zigzag these edges right here just so that they don't fray. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, I changed my needle and obviously I changed it to a bigger size too, which I've never had to do before. But this is what I usually use. I buy them by, you know, in this big of a package and these are the 80s, but I did have some 90s. And so I just put that in and that'll be a little bit stronger, just so you know. So there's a good suggestion, I guess. And then I'm just finishing um, doing the zigzag edge on this. And so I finished re reinforcing with a straight stitch here after I changed the needle just to make sure. And now I'm just zigzagging the edges so that the fabric won't fray on the inside. Turn it back to straight. Okay. So now all we have left to do with this bag is, thankfully, we kept this open, right? And you could open it even farther by putting by doing that if you wanted to and unzipping it a little bit more. But um, I'm just gonna turn it like this. Gently. And then you can pull out on this tab, push that up in the corner. And I also like to use my turner over here to shape. Or um, a crochet hook, which is even, I should have grabbed one of my hooks. Oh wait, I do have a hook. In my bag that I already did, I have a hook. Just because it's a little bit rounder and not so pointy and you really kind of have to push hard on these. So let me just grab one of my hooks. See, that's a little bit rounder and see if that will, then I feel like it, I can really push out on that corner. And then once I get them shaped, I am gonna press a little bit. Now again, because it's quilted, they're not gonna be really, you know, that's about as pointy as you're gonna get them. See that rounded? So, and then using the seam allowance on my finger and just pushing that out right there. See, and then you've got, let's see, your zippers can go together or one way, or you could just always keep one to one side and use this side. I really love these double zippers. They come in handy. Okay, so I kind of just roll this out here and give it a little press. I really love this little bag. And then um, that's what it looks like. So as you can see, maybe I'll just show you what I have in here. You can go ahead and add charms to them. And what I do, how I do with my charms is just got the little hook right there. But one, one fun thing about it too is if you want your little kids to stay out of this, you can, um, you can put a little safety lock on it by putting that hook through both of them. And that's kind of fun. And that keeps it extra secure. So here in my notions, I have my stitch markers, I have a measuring tape, I always keep uh, sticky notes and a pencil, my readers, a package of my needles, a couple of scissors and my, my point protectors, my other two size hooks. 
And that's what I like to keep in this small bag. And that's what I designed this for, is to keep my hooks and just my small things like that. You know, and there's room for a few other things if you needed to, but this is a really good little size bag that you could use my pattern for in this tutorial on any of my other, like I say, decorator weights or fabrics to use for your, you know, cross stitch threads or flosses too. And uh, so there's that small bag. Okay. I'm excited about that. Maybe I'll put this, this red charm on this one. All right, so let me push this, pull this back over here. So during break, I thought I might as well pull this bag out and do it at this point, meaning what I already showed you. So this is done exactly the same way as this is. It's just longer pieces of fabric. So I've already done this half. This is going to be the lining in this one. My zipper's on top for the outsides. And I've already quilted this and I just quilted right down the center of the grannies and right in between the lines on this. And then I have to do the same thing with this. I went ahead and did the other half, just like I have to add the batting in and then quilt it and trim it up just like this. But I wanted to show you that because this is longer, the zipper is still plenty long enough. But as I, I started sewing these on, you know, like this, but this zipper was in the way because it was so close. So when I started sewing these, I had this, I pulled the zippers down here. And then I started sewing and when I got about to that point, then I just opened it up and pulled my zippers back up here so that they are out of the way and that's not a problem. And so I wanted to show you that before I got to that point. Okay, so what I'm gonna do with this now is take a break and go ahead and quilt this whole thing and trim up the edge, put the batting in, quilt it, trim up the edges just like this, other half. And then I'm gonna sew this handle on, okay? Just like I showed you in the small bag. So I'm gonna have that sewn on. I'm going to put the zipper in the center so that I have an opening to turn in. After I get it quilted, this will be quilted. I'm gonna fold it that way and sew all the way around it. And then I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna come back when that's all ready to go because I wanna show you how to put the gusset in the bottom of this. Okay, I'll be back. All right, so I've got this bag to this point, just exactly like I did the other bag. I've sewn, you know, all the way. So what I did, instead of sewing all the way around, I stopped at this point, because I wanted to show you something. But I started from the top here and went down the sides, you know, after trimming everything and made sure they were even, and the bottom did not end up even. So see, this is what this looks like, it's kind of, like that. And so the reason I did from the sides, cause that's more important that the sides are even, you can always trim, you know, a quarter inch or a half inch or even an inch off the bottom. It just makes the bag just a little bit shorter, but it's more important to have them even. So what I do at that point is I use the edge of this ruler and the straight line of this ruler to make sure that this is a straight line, that it's gonna be square. And I'm just gonna pull it down here and that shows that that's where I need to cut that. And I'll, whoops, that moved a little bit. And I'll probably have to cut through several layers, just, you know. I mean, I'll have to do this several times is what I mean, because I'm cutting through several layers. There we go. Okay. So then... Now I've got that, and now I'm gonna go ahead, I'll slide my machine back here, and I just need to hurry and straight stitch that. Closed. And then I'll go ahead and zigzag the edge too. So I'll just do that real quick.
What did I do with my scissors? And then I'll just zigzag at this point. Even though we're gonna cut a little bit out for the gusset or do the different gus gusset a little bit differently than I show you in the directions of the panel because of the two layers of batting. It makes it more difficult to do it the way I showed you in the panel. So this is just as easy. All right, so at this point, just, just like the other bag, you could just um, At this point, just like the other bag, you could just turn it right side out now and it's all done and it's a bag, just a long skinny bag shaped like this without a gusset, okay? But because I want a gusset in it, and this is what I mean by, so you want it to look like this so that it goes, so that you can fit a skein of my yarn in there, my chunky thread yarn. I just like that and I like how it sits up like that, okay? And so that's the difference. So all I do for that, okay, again, I'm gonna push that out of the way. Let's grab a smaller ruler. Let's see here, it's running through. So at this point, I'm just going to measure from, see, this is the three inch line. So I'm gonna have you cut a three inch square out like this. And you could mark it with a pencil if you wanted to, or you could use the rotary cutter and just cut to that point, going through those layers. It's kind of um, more difficult on camera to do it that way. I'll just finish, with, finish this cut with the scissors. Anyway, so there's a three inch square. Okay, cut out of there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side. And I noticed when I was zigzagging, I gotta check my bobbin. I'm either out of bobbin, yeah. All right, I'll be right back when I change, uh, change my bobbin. All right, so I, I finished doing that, changed my bobbin, <laughs> and cut out the two squares that are three inches. Now, I just recommend three inches. That's what I did because that's what fits, you know, like I say, my skinny yarn. But the bigger the square that you do, the deeper the gusset is. So if you didn't want it that deep, you could just do like a two and a half or a two inch. But anyway, so that's what that looks like. I know it looks really weird right now, but it's okay. And then these are, <laughs> these are my little pieces. And actually what I do with those, I just cut those apart like this and then save them to use for my little, my uh, quilty scraps for when I'm using a walking foot and doing quilting things. Okay, so now all you do with this is unfold it this way and you're gonna have the seam allowances go opposite ways like this. You can grab a clip and clip it right there. Or, let's see, I've got just small clips here, so I'm gonna clip it on each, one on each side and then I'll just remove them when I get to that point on the sewing machine. And see how that lines up there? And you're just gonna, gonna fold that bag out of the way because you're just gonna do a quarter inch seam right here, just regular straight. Let's see, make sure I've got it on my straight stitch. And you're definitely gonna back stitch where you stop and start. And just make sure these edges are even as you go along. seams are opposite. I'm going to back stitch. Just 
kind of where those seams are too. And then I just have this left to do. Back stitch where I stopped and started. And then while I'm working on this side, I'm just gonna zigzag these edges too. I already zigzagged all of the other edges because it's too hard to get into once you've already done the gusset to do all the edges. So I'll just do them separately like this. And I just like to zigzag. You don't have to do this, but I usually do in bag making. Just, I know this is the inside, but I still don't want little fraying edges. what that looks like okay the same going that way that same going that way and then I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat for this side and because this seam went this way that's how I want it to go here so clip again Make sure these are lined up. I'll kind of push that in and fold it that way. It's easier to handle on the other end. zigzag and this is the last stitching on this bag Okay, so that's what that looks like. And then because I've opened the zipper, I can even open it more. I don't have to struggle getting, you know, that whole thing through if I don't want to. I don't want to put a lot of pressure on the zippers because the zippers top when I'm turning so I'll usually do those, kind of shape those first. Like that. I like to take advantage of that seam allowance and just push it out like that. So that zipper's on top. I could maybe do that a little bit better by pushing a little bit more. There we go. And then you've just got your points right here to push out. And that's easy enough with, you know, just using my finger. And there you've got your happy crochet bag. Let me push this out of the way so I can All right, so that's what that looks like. That's what it looks like on the sides. Here's your handle. 
What I love about these crochet bags, about having the zipper on the top as well, is they're actually kind of reversible, meaning when you put, let me grab something. Well, I can just show you on this. Okay, so this one, meaning I can have this side show if I do the two different sides. Because the zipper's on the top, I can go like that. And these actually, the handle is just on this side and little Cassidy's keychain here. And that's on that side. So that's kind of fun with having the zipper on the top. Now, as far as what these bags will hold, this one right here, I have 20 skeins of my yarn in. I could put even four more and that would hold 24 and that's fully un unused The you know, that's the full skeins. But with 20 skeins, you know, I still have room but I can put that in there because I designed this to go inside. And I like that you can just put this on your wrist and carry it. And so that makes it a good, you know, I'm always taking my crochet camping and stuff like that, or just have it keeping it in my car and just a stuff for when I have extra time. And so I love to have a bag that's on the go and also to use for my projects, like to, my things that I already have crocheted that I can put in here waiting to join rows together and things. Now this one, I want to show you here. I actually have, because I've wound all of my yarns into cakes as I'm using them, like I've shown you before on past videos, I want to show you what I have in here. I have grannies, several granny squares already done, but I have one of all of my 32 colors represented in here because they're all in different varying sizes. Some are bigger, some are smaller, just because I've been using them, you know, as we go along in the cakes. And so that fits in there. So I know I love to have this bag so that I have one of every size. I could still, I mean, one of every color. <laughs> I could still fit that in there, kind of down the side. I could even put it in the bottom if I wanted to, and I can still fit a few grannies. So I could even take this bag right here and have it in my car and know that I have one of all of my colors of yarn. I have scissors and hooks and all my notions in there, plus room for finished grannies. Okay, so there's the bag. And thanks for sticking with me through this uh, tutorial of, you know, running out of bobbin and breaking needles and stuff like that. But that's how it goes when we sew, right? But I hope you love sewing these little bags. They're really fun. I plan on sewing a lot more this size for different things. And on Monday, which will be June 6, I'll be filming another video because that's the kickoff of the Granny Square Along. And so I'm super excited about that. So join me for that and I'll chat with you later.